Okay, let's have a look at MEI M2, January 2010, question 1, on the topic of collisions and conservation of momentum. The question's in three parts, so have a look at each part. This is the first bit, and pause the video as you need to, to, to read it carefully. Here's the middle bit, and then here's the last bit. Okay, well the first part is a fairly standard conservation of momentum. It's an object travelling along at 1 meters per second, 6 kilogram object that explodes into two parts. So all the forces are internal, the, the impulse is internal, and that means there's a conservation of momentum. So if we show the speed, we've got to find the speed of the 4 kilogram portion afterwards. I'll just call it speed V, there like that. And the usual principle of conservation of linear momentum. The momentum before 6 times 1 will equal 4 times V plus 2 times 4. So we get 6 equals 4V plus 8, 4V equals minus 2, and V equals minus 0.5. The minus isn't a problem, it just means, probably as we expected, that the uh, the portion Q is moving to the left at 0.5 meters per second. Okay, that's the first part for, um, for 4 marks. On to the next part now. Now, object R, the other part of the uh, exploded object, is traveling at 4 and it reaches the edge of the table. So here it is, object R traveling at 4. It reaches the edge of the table and collides directly with another small object S of mass 3. It's traveling towards it with a speed of 1. So here's my diagram, an important diagram of, of the speeds before and after impact, before and after, um, with the masses drawn inside the circles, just, just so that we don't get them mixed up. So this time, we bring in the coefficient of restitution, E is 0.1. So we've got two equations to write down now. We've got uh, the conservation of momentum, PCLM, which in this case goes 4 times 2 minus 3 times 1 equals 2V1 plus 3V2. Um, that tidies up to 2v1 plus 3v2 equals 5. Then Newton's experimental law, or the law of restitution, says the relative speeds afterwards, v2 minus v1, is minus e minus 0.1 into the speeds taken away in the same order beforehand, which is minus 1 and minus 4. That's the equation to be careful with. And that tidies up to V2 minus V1 equals 0.5. Right, so 2V2 minus 2V1 equals 1, and 2V1 plus 3V2 equals 5. We want to solve those and find the velocities of R and S, find V1 and V2. So I've just got room to solve them, if you don't mind me using every bit of available space. Adding them, we get 5V2 equals 6. I'll just write the solution in black here, so otherwise it's going to look a bit confusing. 5V2 equals 6 then, so V2 is 6 fifths. And... V1 is V2 minus 0.5, which is 0 0.7. Let's write that as one, right, both in decimals. So that's 1.2, and V1 is 0 0.7. So we've just fit, fitted it in there, just a bit shorter space. V2 and V1, the speeds afterwards, 1.2 and 0 0.7. Just in case that 1.2 is off the side of the video, because it's getting close. I'll write them again here. V1 is 0 0.7 and V2 
Oh, what's going wrong there? V2 is one, 1 1.2. Right. Now, for part three, we've got part three here. I've, I've placed it onto the next slide, I think. Calculate the distance apart of R and S when they reach the floor. So what's happened is they've collided up right on the edge of the table, right at the edge, effectively, and they've now got a distance of 0.4 meters to fall to the floor. Let's go to the next page. Right, here they are then, and we've got speeds of V2, it was 1.2, sorry, what happened there? V2 is 1.2, and V1 is 0.7. Now, what's important is, we want to find the distance apart they are. So we can easily find the time that it takes for them to reach the floor. Let's do that now. Time for s equals 0.4 vertically then s is 0.4 u is 0 vertically and acceleration is 9.8 downwards we're going to find t so s equals ut plus a half a t squared the familiar Suvat equation becomes uh, 0.4 equals 4.9 T squared. And that gives us a time of, if you use your calculator, uh, well, a time of two sevenths if you leave it as a fraction. T equals two sevenths. Now, to find the distance apart they are, because they both move through the air in this time, but we need the relative velocity to find the velocity, or the velocity of separation, you could call it. I've started writing relative velocity, so I'll finish with it. Relative velocity, which is 1.2 minus 0.7. So that's a separation velocity then, or a relative velocity, of 0 0.5 meters per second. So in the time of 2 sevenths seconds, they're separating at a speed of 0.5. So the distance apart is, is 0 0.5 times the time. And that's one seventh meters, leaving it as a fraction. One seventh meters. And that's correct for that part. Okay, that's the distance apart that they hit the floor. So, one more bit to do now. And I think it's only a short bit. A particle of mass m bounces off a smooth horizontal plane. So, it tells you it's coming in with components of u parallel to the plane and v perpendicular and the coefficient of restitution is e. Well, the plane is fixed, can't move, so the relative speed after impact is e times the relative speed before means that the velocity of this one off the plane is e v. And because it's a smooth plane, the speed component parallel to the plane is unchanged. Right. So k is a half mv squared, and v squared before is the magnitude of the velocity squared, so it's, I'll put quotes on it, v squared before is u squared plus v squared, the square of the two components, and v squared afterwards, the square of the magnitude of the velocity will be u squared plus e squared v squared. Well, I've said before again there, my dafter, too busy talking. Uh, pen, v squared after. So the v squared is just, just to be clear here, let's just show it afterwards. We've got a component of u and ev making, and this is the magnitude of v. And the magnitude of v squared is u squared plus ev all squared. Okay, so the k you lost is a half m, or well, the one before will be the bigger one, so it's a half m into u squared plus v squared minus u squared minus e squared v squared, taking the difference, which is a half m, there's your m,
u squares have cancelled, half mv squared minus e squared v squared. Does that give what they want? Yeah, it does if we take the v squared out. So half mv squared bracket 1 minus e squared. Okay, just tidying this up and putting the little, just making it completely correct. That's a vector, so it should have a line under it. Yeah, that's the end of this question for four marks, this last part. Now, as far as the mark scheme is concerned, the different parts of the question, just giving a rough breakdown of it. Going back to the first part. Uh, no, that's not the first part. This is the first part. The first part had four marks, which was M1 and three A's. So a method mark for doing the, the conservation of momentum. Three accuracy marks um, for putting in the, the values and the proper signs and finding the correct final. I won't list them as three separate ones. I'll just say A3. And then the next part of the question, the main part, as it were, for... Um, uh, a total of six marks for this. It had an M1A1 for both the, PC, the PCLM and Newton's experimental law. Okay. That was four marks out of the six. And then, uh, then it had two accuracy marks for finding the V1 and V2. So I'll just call that A2. And that's the six marks for um, that part. And then for the final three marks, um, no, we're not the final. No, no, there's a part four as well. So part three for three marks, we had um, for working out the time, one mark, a B mark, a method mark for working out the velocity of se separation or the relative velocity, and an accuracy mark for the right answer. That's the three marks for that part. And now for the final part. Um, right. Two marks for basically the diagram and showing... Let me just see if it's two marks. Well, on the mark scheme, they put a B1 alongside this and a B1 alongside that for the... EV off the plane, and then an M1A1 for basically for using the expression for kinetic energy and putting the correct values in. One, two, three, four, that's right. Right, that was January 2010, MAIM2, question one.